you just like a business owner, the only way you may not be able to do it is if you're a real estate agent or an insurance agent, your broker may not pay your commissions to your business. They may want to pay it to you as a 1099. They're just brokers that are not going to let you run a business and, and pay you. That's okay. That's okay if, that, if, if, if you're one of those people. But if you're a network marketer, what you need to do if you implemented that W-2 strategy, that W-4 strategy, and you're doing network marketing, I would highly recommend that you reach back out to that network marketing company once you get a business started and switch your social security number to your EIN. Hey, a lot of people don't do that. They just give everybody their social security number. Then you start getting all these 1099s and you're going to have to pay self-employment taxes on those 1099s. And most people, by the time they do their taxes, they hadn't put any money aside because they're not tracking their income and expenses. So one way to mitigate those issues is to run your transactions through a business. And a lot of times you may not be in a position to run a business yet, but owning a business is a start because at least you're able to own a system that these transactions can run through and you can verify and validate all these other strategies that you're implementing. All right, any questions on that so far? I know I'm going, I'm, I'm covering a lot, yes. Yeah, you're, I mean, that's the basic way of saving your receipts, but if you are using these apps and you are actually um, using your debit card and you're staying on top of that. Like I work with CPAs and tax strategists. I'm not one, but I work with, I have a lot of them that, that are in my network, in my ecosystem that I work with in different places. Um, I've never really had one say, oh, you can't use your transactions that show up from, on your bank account through your debit card to validate it. So I'm not saying you can't use your, your, your receipts, but if you have your Mint account set up or for your personal finances and or if you have your QuickBooks account set up for your 1099 or your business transactions, then if you're swiping your debit card or credit card for your business or if you're making sure you put those transactions with receipts in, you're going to have that track record. But again, it's going to it's going to be a part of you learning to become a manager of your finances. This is the part that y'all read in the affirmations earlier. Make money, manage money. Well, managing money means I've got to stay on top of the money that I'm making. So I should be able to look back every 30 days, especially if I'm running transactions through a business. When you start using some of those strategies, you should be able to look back every 30 days and say, oh, okay, I had this much money coming in. I had this much money going out. Here's what my net profit is projected to be. So if I got my taxes done today, I would be paying taxes on that net dollar amount. So you have to be able to stay on top. You can't wait to December and be like, oh, my God, Lord, I don't know what happened. You know, I've done that before. I've done that before where I've had hundreds of transactions. I had to go back and reconcile because I didn't stay on top of it if I had too many accounts. So, so the wise thing would be for starters is, yes, keep the receipts. Make sure that they match all the transactions that show up on your, uh, your, your financial management app, whether it's Mint or QuickBooks, and make sure that if you revisit your W-4, even if you don't go all the way up to the top and put nine allowances, if you put six, you're going to see the dollar difference when you get your next pay, pay stub. So, so if you look at your pay stub now and you see they're taking out $200 every two weeks of federal taxes and you go from two to, to five or two to six, and then your next pay stub, that $200 that they're taking out went to 18, then you know you're going to realize another 170 something odd dollars in your check. But then that means for, for the next year, that, that total dollar amount that you no longer are giving them, you're probably not, probably not gonna get that dollar amount back from them, but you're gonna make sure you're weighing it against your business deductions. So you, you, you have to be responsible when you start playing that game. So it's, it's education, you gotta get educated 
on a lot of those things, you got to get trained. You don't just want to jump out there. I know a lot of people jump out there and say, oh, it sounds good. And then you do it. And then next year you blaming everybody who told you what to do when throughout the year you got to educate yourself. You got to train. You got to